Hello, everybody. This is a brief introduction to quantum physics. I'm Ricardo, professor at the Physics Institute of the Federal University of Goiás. Let's first discuss about the domains of mechanics. So, consider this diagram where this direction is pointing to a small scale, to objects with small dimensions. And this direction is pointing to high velocities objects. So, classical mechanics is under this domain, where the objects are not too small and are not too fast. This theory is based on our direct human experience, the experience of the everyday life. So, when you go from classical mechanics to the description of motion of objects with higher and higher velocities comparable to the velocity of light in vacuum, then you are under the domain of relativistic mechanics or special re relativity. And now, strange effects, at least a priori, appear. So, why these are strange effects? Because they are not based on our direct experience. After you get used to the, to the theory, then these effects are no more strange. And when you go from classical mechanics to the description of small objects, I mean, under the atomic scale, then you have the quantum mechanics. This is the domain of quantum mechanics. And, again, strange effects, at least a priori, appear. When you get used to quantum mechanics, these, these effects are no longer strange, or no longer very strange. They are uh, it, it is uh, hard to, to have a feeling of the predictions of quantum mechanics. And when you are dealing with very small objects under very high velocities, then you need this theory, quantum field theory. And again, strange effects on these three domains here, because they are different, very different from our experience of the everyday life. You may say that this is the non-relativistic non quantum mechanics, and this is the relativistic quantum mechanics. We are going to focus on this video on the non-relativistic quantum mechanics. These are going to be our focus. And you may ask, why do we need a new theory? Why you need a new theory when you are describing the motion of small objects? Again, under the atomic scale. Well, we will get there soon. But let me say that classical mechanics cannot describe some effects, or, or, or in other words, there are some limitations from this, this theory, and then we need something else to describe the effects that we do observe in um, the laboratory. But let me show what this guy, Richard Feynman, said on this famous Feynman Lectures on Physics, Chapter 1, of the third volume. He said that quantum mechanics is the description of the behavior of matter and light in all its details, and in particular of the happenings on an atomic scale. Things on a very small scale behave like nothing that you have any direct experience about. 
They do not behave like waves. They do not behave like particles. They do not behave like clouds or billiard balls or weights on springs or like anything that you have ever seen. Because atomic behavior is so unlike ordinary experience, it is very difficult to get used to and it appears peculiar and mysterious to everyone, both to the novice and to the experienced physicist. Even the experts do not understand it the way they would like to. This is very uh, real and interesting. Even the experts do not understand the quantum mechanics the way they would like to. And it is perfectly reasonable that they should not, because all of direct human experience and of human intuition applies to large objects. We know how large objects will act, but things on a small scale just do not act that way. So we have to learn about them in a sort of abstract or imaginative fashion and not by connection with our direct experience. So again, this question, why do we need a new theory? Because classical physics cannot describe some interesting effects. And nothing better than examples to exemplify. So, let's start with the photoelectric effect. When incident light on a metal plate um, ejects electrons, there is this emission of electrons, we call this the photoelectric effect. And the main properties of this effect cannot be described by classical physics. Another example. The discrete spectrum of atoms. Instead of the prediction of, class of classical physics that would be a continuum spectrum, the different atoms, the different elements, has, have a different spectrums and they, they, they are discrete. So here you see the spectrum from hydrogen, helium, mercury and uranium. All of them are discrete. Either the emission or absorption spectrum. So these lines here shows the energy levels and and instead of continuum, you have discrete. This is a problem, this is an issue of classical physics as well. The stability of atoms. So, the Rutherford, the Rutherford model describes an, an atom with a nucleus and the electrons circling around the nucleus. But, under the classical physics laws, the electrons would lose energy continuously and fall into the nucleus under a spiral path. So, under, for, for classical physics, you cannot explain the stability of atoms. The atoms would not be stable, but they are. So we are on, on problem again. We have a problem here again. Even the periodic table of the elements, they, they, they can be explained only by quantum mechanics. So we, we already knew the periodic table, but the explanation of this pattern will come only with quantum mechanics. And the einstein debye theory of specific heat. Here is a plot where you see the temperature and here the specific heat as a function of temperature. And the classical theory prediction is this curve here, this line. So it is constant. 
as a function of temperature. It does not depend on temperature. And what you see from the experiments is this solid curve here. Then Einstein used the quantization that we are going to discuss and, and uh, elaborated a, a model, which is the Einstein model of the specific heat. The Bay later improved this model and now we do have a very good explanation of the experimental results. And the ultraviolet catastrophe. So this phenomena, this very interesting phenomena, is related to thermal radiation, the radiation that um, heated bodies uh, emit. So the, this is the amount of radiation and this is the wavelength of radiation in nanometers. The classical theory predicts this curve here, where under the ultraviolet wavelength, the amount of radiation emitted by a, uh, by, by thermal, uh, by, by a body, heated body, would go to infinity. So this is obviously not the case. And what we observe is a curve like this. And the explanation will come with the quantization proposed, postulated by Planck. And then he explained this effect that the prediction of classical physics would manifest, the ultraviolet catastrophe. So this is Planck, and let's talk about his contribution, a historical perspective. So under, on this paper, on the theory of the energy distribution law of the normal spectrum, published in uh, December 14th, in 1900, he proposed the quantization and could explain the, the, the thermal radiation issue and this was the beginning of a revolution on physics. You may say that this is the birth, birthday of the quantum physics or what we call now the old quantum physics. Why? Because the contribution from Planck is, um, was in, in 1900, what we call old quantum physics, and in 1925-26, Schrödinger, Heisenberg, Dirac, and many others, with, with their contributions, we got the modern quantum mechanics. So we have here 25, 26 years, and what we are going to do now is to talk about this adventure, about this history, what happened from the beginning of quantum physics up to the development of modern quantum mechanics. So this is the adventure that we are going to present now. And we will present experimental phenomena and their contradiction to classical laws predictions. So we will discuss in detail the experimental phenomena that we already presented briefly and their contradiction to classical laws. For instance, what we have discussed, the ultraviolet catastrophe for thermal radiation. And these contradictions are on mechanics, thermodynamics, statistical mechanics, and electromagnetism. So we are dealing here with all these disciplines, all the classical physics. That's why we call the new ideas that we are going to discuss as the quantum physics, not quantum mechanics only. This is going to be quantum physics, the quantization on thermodynamics as well, on statistical mechanics, on electromagnetism. So we are going to discuss quantum physics and then we will develop all we need to study, to understand the modern quantum mechanics. 
So please take note of all we are going to discuss in other videos. As we already said, the Planck contribution from the radiation law to explain this effect, the Einstein contribution explaining using the quantization and explaining the photoelectric effect, the einstein debye theory of specific heat, the Bohr proposed atomic model explaining what the Rutherford model could not explain, the de Broglie contribution for uh, the idea uh, of matter waves and the duality, duality uh, wave and particles, between wave and particles, and we are going to discuss all these showing many experiments, the results of many experiments. For instance, the Compton experiment, Frank Hertz, Davison Germer Thompson, um, Stern Gerlach, and other experiments. Finally, we will study and investigate the contributions from Heisenberg, the famous uncertainty relation, from Schrodinger, the already famous, um, also famous um, wave equation, Schrodinger wave equation, Dirac contributions, for instance, the Dirac notation and the Dirac equation on the relativistic quantum mechanics, Pauli contribution, and many others. At the end, we will get the modern quantum mechanics. So, this was a brief introduction to quantum physics. Stay tuned to other videos, and thank you very much.